So you want an awesome looking retro cafe racer, but your head is spinning at the dazzling array of choices. Well, in this video, I've compiled my eight picks and we'll go through them in price order ascending, scoring them along the way. And then at the end, I'll give you my winners. Now that there are fewer and fewer new factory produced cafe racers on the market. A lot of them seem to have been discontinued over the past few years. And so I've had to rank these bikes by the estimated used price, which I've mostly taken from our partners over at Superbike Factory. And so the most affordable way to cripple yourself by reaching down for a pair of clip-ons that you're too old for is the Royal Enfield Continental GT. Four and a half grand should get you a decent used example, but they're not even that pricey new, starting at just £6,799. Now the old saying goes good, fast, cheap, pick any two, but in the cafe racer world I reckon it's more like good looking, fast and cheap. And this bike definitely hits the cheap spot, and I for one also think it's a great looking bike. It's got all the classic hallmarks of a cool retro retro cafe bike. So you've got the single seat setup and the seat cowl, the long slim tank, the clip on bars and the right sort of low and long silhouette. So certainly an A for style here, but the trade off is that it's not that fast. So I'll give it a C for performance. It's a fairly weighty bike and it only makes 47 horsepower peak. The brakes are basic, the suspension and tires are basic. And so we've got some much more spicy stuff coming up on this list. That said, I still got to score it A for value because like I say, new or used, it's about as affordable as it gets for a full-size cafe racer. Now, unfortunately, it loses the Bobby bonus point for not having a cafe racer style fairing, either as standard or in the accessories catalog. And so the total for this bike as a starter, three for an A, two for a B, one for a C. So it's grand total without the bonus point is seven. Now, next up, we've got the W800 from Kawasaki. And while I appreciate them getting a cafe style bike on the market, I'm gonna have to give this one a C on style because it's the bare minimum effort for a cafe racer edition of a bike. Because essentially, Essentially, they've just stuck a fairing on the standard W800 and that's about it. There's no other significant changes. The other thing is a lot of them come in brown, which is fine on the saddle for that sort of retro leather look. But for me, brown is a color that I don't really think should grace the fuel tank of any motorcycle. Performance is a C as well. It's got the same 47 horsepower as the Enfield and the fairly simple chassis. So it'd be unfair on the Enfield to score it otherwise. And then for value, I'll go for B. I mean, you can't buy these new anymore. This is one of the bikes that has been discontinued, but around about five and a half grand seems reasonable for one used. Thing is, you could save a grand and get the Enfield, which for me is better looking and it runs about the same. But this bike does, however, rescue the bonus point for the factory fairing, and so it gives it five in total. Now, before we get on to the next one, I just want to say a massive thanks to Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is the ultimate way to learn about maths, science, and computer science. And the focus is on doing rather than just sitting and listening, which personally I much prefer. Two courses that I'd specifically recommend to fellow bikers would be Classical Mechanics, which has plenty of automotive references and examples, but also Physics of the Everyday, which is super interesting to anyone who's practically minded. But on top of those, there are thousands of lessons across a huge range of courses that will help you to level up, from foundational and advanced maths, to AI, data science, neural networks, and more, with more and more lessons being added every month. Now, not only will you get specific practical skills from it, but also learn how to be a better thinker all round and improve your problem solving abilities. So head to the link in the description or go ahead and type out brilliant.org slash motobob to get started with Brilliant's free 30-day trial. And on top of that, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So once again, a massive thanks to Brilliant.org for their support. And with that, back to the bikes. Now the Ducati Scrambler Night Shift is a rather handsome bike. For 2023, it's got that new lustrous deep blue paint job. It's got the flat and low bars with some bar end mirrors. It's got some side number boards, spoke wheels, and the brown tuck and roll style saddle. And for me, it's just a great great looking bike, but I think I'm still going to have to score it a B in this context because it's obviously cafe racer inspired, but it's not quite, you know, typical cafe racer. No seat hump, no fairing, no clip-ons, you know, none of the signature design features. And I'll also score it a B on performance. It's a cut above the other two. It's got over 70 horsepower on tap, a much lighter chassis as well, and then componentry from the big names like Brembo, Pirelli, and KYB. In fact, I recently rode this new model just last week 
week and it's a proper blast for little country back roads and it should also make for a nimble little bike to pick your way through town so ideal cafe racer performance and then value I'll go for B as well because the new one is getting on for 11 grand now which I think is a bit steep for this sort of bike but if you shop around used you can find some of the older full throttle or cafe or classic versions all of which share some of the attitude of this new night shift and you can get them for pretty good money I've seen them around six and a half grand no fairing so no bonus point but that's six in total now here's a bit of a surprise for me the BMW R90 racer straight up a fantastic looking bike and so I have to give it an A I just love the simple white paint and then the splash of blue and red and you've got the fairing the clip-ons the tail hump the spokes it's a beautiful modern interpretation of the cafe racer format and I'm also going to give it an A on performance this is up over 100 horsepower so it can definitely mix it with the quicker bikes on this list and they also handle too I mean the engine keeps its weight nice and low and all the hardware is decent stuff but the surprise for me is the price I mean it's another one that's been discontinued but used it looks like you can get them for about seven and a half grand or so maybe a little less and still with only about 5,000 miles on the clock so that's another A for the BMW and that's full marks great looking fast not that pricey and it's got the bonus point for the fairing too it's just a good job that we don't have a comfort category because these have a bit of a reputation for being excruciating after an hour or two next up Thruxton looks a, need I say any more? The best looking modern retro cafe racer on the market by a country mile in my opinion, especially with that accessory fairing. I mean, the BMW looks great, but it has its own unusual proportions and might be a little bit of an acquired taste. Whereas this, the Thruxton, is just perfectly balanced. And it's the cafe racer equivalent of a Fender Stratocaster. It's just what a typical guitar should look like. Triumph also do extremely well with all the little details and finishing touches like the little holes in the side panels or the beautiful top yoke. A also for performance, the engine is absolutely wonderful and has loads of creamy torque. It's a Triumph so it's built to handle and also if you go for one of the top spec models you get brakes, tyres and suspension that would rival most modern nakeds. The only downside would be the price, I mean used there's a good selection from about eight grand which seems totally reasonable but the new version in 2023 only comes in the top end RS spec. There's no base model anymore and so you'll have to shell out over 14 grand if you want something with zero miles on the clock. Steep if you ask me so I'm going to go for C on value but it recovers the fairing bonus point and that lands it on a healthy looking 8. Now also around this price point another great option is the Kawasaki Z900 RS Cafe. This is another A on looks for me. All of the Z900 RS bikes look pretty great with the 70s Z1 inspired styling but this particular variant gets their classic Kawasaki green paint and then also the little bikini fairing up front that earns it the cafe suffix. A on performance too, the underpinnings come from their Z900 naked so it's quick enough and being the only inline four on this list it brings its own character and sound and feel which will definitely appeal to some riders. It's got that smooth and revy power delivery and then I'll give it a B here on value because scanning the used listings it's decent on price but not quite a snip like the BMW R9 T and again discontinued so there's no new price to compare. Now it gets the fairing as standard so that's an extra point and that's nine in total which is very very respectable in this 100% made up scoring framework. Now I couldn't do this list without mentioning the XSR 900 a bath from Yamaha. This was a limited run a few years back and I once saw one when I was out riding and it is one epic looking bike that really does leave a lasting impression. You've got the dedicated paint job, the Akropovich exhaust, upside down cow horn style bars, bar and mirrors, the mini fairing and and then this incredible looking long tail section with the little round tail light that looks a little bit like an MV Augusta Super Veloce. Definitely an awesome bike to look at but I think I'll have to give it a B because it's not exactly classic cafe racer and this is a retro list after all and basically what you've got here is a Yamaha MT-09 in a body kit. Put it next to something like the Thruxton and it can't really quite earn that A but it has to be an A on performance because the inline triple CP3 engine from Yamaha makes just as good power as any 
any bike on this list and it's an absolute joy to ride. Plus you've got the sort of current day chassis underneath and while I do believe it's a little bit lively in terms of the handling because you've got all of your weight over the front, I think in comparison to the other bikes on this list it's fair to put it up towards the top. Value, again I'll say a B in the same way as the Z900 RS. Used, you're looking at about 9 grand but it was a limited build of just 695 bikes of which only 100 made it to the UK. So you could justify the extra grand over the Kawasaki and it gets the point for the cafe fairing and so you've got a grand total of 7. But top of the tree price wise is the Norton Commando 961CR. This is a beautiful looking machine and it almost looks custom like it's handmade. And specifically the clip on cafe style CR model as opposed to the flat bar SP just has that slightly lower set stance that really suits the rest of the chassis. Now power is a little bit more modern than some of the bikes more recently on this list. So it makes about 77 horsepower peak and it is pretty hefty at 230 kilograms curb, but it is a super pleasant bike to ride with loads of character. And it's also got this deep bassy exhaust note that gives you a really nice soundtrack. Now, as you'd expect at this price point, you get the best of the best in terms of Brembo brakes and Olin suspension. And it certainly adds a quality feel to the braking and ride. So I think it's got to be A on looks, B on performance and used, you can maybe pick them up for a around 12 grand, but I will give you a word of warning. This is the older model before they re-engineered it recently. And the goal was to improve safety and also reliability. So I definitely suggest you do your research before you get involved with an older model on the used market. New ones are £16,999 though, which is certainly top end for this style of bike. They really are quite stunning in the flesh, but in the context of this list, it's got to be a C and there's no bonus point for the fairing. So six for this one. And that brings me nicely to my recommendation. So if you want something cheap, used or new, then you've got to go for the Enfield, I reckon. It's great value for money. It looks authentic and it rides decent too. If on the other hand, you've got your heart set on something brand new, then there are only really four options on the list. And my pick, providing you've got the funds, would be the Thruxton. It looks every bit as good and classic as the Enfield, if not a little bit better, but the riding experience is far, far, far more exhilarating. But our top scorers on this list were the Kawasaki Kawasaki Z900 RS Cafe with 9 and the BMW R90 Racer with 10. So if you fancy something quick, cool looking, but you want to save a bit of cash on something used, then both of these are 100% worth a look. As always, I'd love to know which bike you'd pick down in the comments below, so do let me know. And if you want to see my full review of the Norton, which I shot at the UK launch last year, then I'll link to it on the screen here. Give it a click, give it a watch, let me know what you think. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.